What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the all-new Samsung Galaxy S6, perhaps the most exciting new phone from Samsung in quite a few years, and it's a very important one. It's really here to kind of bring Samsung back to the forefront of the smartphone race with high-end specs and high-end design and quality. So perhaps the biggest new story here is the design. Gone is the all-plastic design of the previous generation. Now we have an all-metal and glass design, which also means we no longer have a removable back panel to swap out batteries or expand memory, uh, this also is no longer waterproof like the previous Galaxy S5. And on the front we have a stunning QHD display with a resolution of 1440 by 2560 good for 577 pixels per inch. That is a stunning amount of resolution to work with and the display definitely looks fantastic. Now both the front and back of the phone are covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 4 which is more durable but still shatter prone. So of course if you throw this on the floor or drop it on concrete you may break or shatter the screen so keep that in mind and you may want to wear case. But the great thing about having a glass back panel as opposed to metal is that this can work with wireless charging. In fact, wireless charging is built right in and this works with both wireless Qi and power mat. So this is kind of a true universal wireless charging system. Also on the front you'll find an all new fingerprint sensor which uses imaging instead of a swipe gesture which works a lot more like the iPhone. And we're going to take a close look at this. On the back, we have a new 16 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, which is good for 4K video recording. We also have our heart rate monitor returning once again. On the front, we have a five megapixel front facing camera, which can record in 2K resolution, which is kind of unique. Now, in terms of our internal specs, we have a Samsung Exynos 64-bit octa-core processor, which combines two quad cores, one clocked at 1.5 gigahertz, the other clocked at 2.1 gigahertz. We also have the Mali T760 GPU built in. In terms of storage, because we do not have expandable storage, we have three storage options, 32, 64, and 128 gigs. We also have three gigs of RAM across the board. Now, in terms of our battery, that's at 2,550 milliamp hours, and again, it is sealed in. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the unboxing here, and you can see the packaging is very different from previous Samsung phones. No longer that wood grain theme. It's just a nice plain white box. So we're going to go ahead and slice these seals along the side. All right, so let's go ahead and pop the lid, and inside is our Galaxy S6. Now, it looks very familiar to other Samsung phones, at least on the front, but the big difference happens when you pick it up and handle it. You can feel right away that nice glass and metal design. Very thin, very lightweight, very high quality, and of course, the battery is already in here, so we don't have to pop off any panel to install anything. Just slide the plastic off, and we're good to go. Now we have a few more pieces of plastic covering the camera lens here and the heart rate sensor right next to it. Now before we take a detailed look at the phone, let's get to our accessories here. So we have our literature packet. Let's go and slide everything out here to see what we get. So in my case, I get a T-Mobile Quick Start Guide. We also get a Galaxy S6 accessory guide. There's quite a few of them, including a wireless charger and some cover accessories, uh, a little flyer for Samsung's Milk Music and Milk Video Services, Health Warranty and Safety Guide, Recycling Program for T-Mobile, and Terms, Conditions, Return Policy, etc. Now in terms of our accessories, we do get the new adaptive fast charger from Samsung, which is fantastic. This means you can charge the battery really quickly here. Samsung says you can get about four hours out of a five minute charge, and it takes a little more than an hour to completely charge your phone from zero to full. We also have our micro USB 2.0 cable. This is just USB 2.0. There is no USB 3 like we saw with the last generation Galaxy S5. Now something we haven't seen very often with a Samsung phone is a SIM ejection tool because we do not have a removable back panel we have to use this tool to eject our nano sim also included with the galaxy s6 is samsung's new set of in-ear headphones these are very similar in shape to the ear pods from apple uh, but you do have replacement gel so you can kind of swap them out to find the right size but you do have an inline remote control and microphone all right so let's go and press the power button along the right side here to get it started so taking a closer look at the design of our Galaxy S6, once again, it's the same size as the previous generation, 5.1 inches. The big difference here is that QHD resolution, which is quite stunning. And again, AMOLED gives you these bright, vivid colors in deep blacks. So down here, we have a new larger home button, which also integrates that imaging fingerprint sensor. Uh, it's a little more raised here and feels a lot more tactile than before. It feels really nice. Of course, we still have our backlit off-screen capacitive Android keys, and we'll take a look at how those work. Up top, we have our flush earpiece. Right next to that is the 5 megapixel front camera, good for 2K resolution. We also have our ambient light sensor and proximity sensor, and we do have an LED notification light hidden in the bezel. 
Down below, milled into the metal frame of our phone is the headphone jack, the micro USB 2.0 port, no flap here to cover it up, and no USB 3.0. We also have our microphone as well as the side facing speaker as opposed to the rear facing speaker of the previous generation. Now just like on the bottom, the top also features those antenna insulators, and at the center is an IR blaster for controlling AV equipment, and then we have another microphone built in. Now mounted high on the left hand side are the independent volume controls, which are nice and tactile. And mounted farther down on the right hand side is the sleep wake power button right above the nano sim tray. Now along the back side, like a lot of Samsung phones, we have a protruding camera, which is a little more pronounced here because of the flat surface area back here. Uh, but again, we have 16 megapixels, optical image stabilization, 4K video recording, a really nice camera. We also have this nice flush heart rate monitor, which includes the LED flash, which puts out a really nice warm color. It's not dual tone, but it has a really nice natural light. And I really want to talk about the design of the Galaxy S6, starting with the small bezels along the side. Really nice narrow form factor, feels really comfortable in the hand. It looks really attractive. Active. Everything is nice and symmetrical. Of course, we have larger bezels at the top and bottom for things like our buttons and as well as our sensors and earpiece at the top. Everything, of course, just looks about right to me. Now, the glass is also slightly curved along the edge here. Uh, which means that the surfaces feel nice and smooth as it meets the metal frame. The metal frame is slightly chamfered at the edge, so you do get a little kind of a glint from the metal, which looks really nice here. And if you look along the side, the uh, the rounded edge is kind of blunted on the right hand and left hand side to give you a little more surface here to grip the phone and to operate the controls. Again, a really nice subtle design, but it makes a difference. And on the back, we have this nice smooth sheet of glass, again, also curved toward the edges, which meets the chamfered edge of the metal bezel, which looks really sharp here. Uh, this glass is actually sort of pearlescent. It's not just plain white here. So it looks a little more interesting, especially when the light hits it. That works across all the colors that are available on this device. You get that nice opalescent color both on the front and on the back. Again, it just looks really simple, elegant, and well thought out. Now quickly comparing the Galaxy S5 to the Galaxy S6, you can see the display is the same size, 5.1 inches. Now the GS6 is slightly taller with larger bezels at the top and bottom, just slightly to accommodate the larger home button toward the bottom. But you can see the GS6 is narrower with smaller bezels, so the phone feels a little more comfortable to handle and certainly much thinner than the Galaxy S5. Now at the top, they've rearranged some of the sensors, the earpiece is a bit larger and a bit lower, and the camera module is noticeably larger on the GS6 for better low light performance. Toward the bottom, the home button is noticeably larger, which means we do get slightly larger bezels at the top and bottom compared to the previous GS5, but the controls on either side are the same. On the left side, you can see the volume controls are in the same location, but they're now split controls instead of a volume rocker. Now on the right side, the power button has been shifted down a bit and they've added the nano SIM tray. Now on the top, once again, we have an IR blaster, but they've relocated the headphone jack to the bottom. Taking a look at the bottom, you can also see that we now have the speaker grill toward the bottom instead of on the back as we had with the previous Galaxy S5. And we no longer have that watertight flap covering the USB 3 port. Now we just have a USB 2.0 port. And on the back, once again, we have our protruding camera modules as well as the heart rate monitor, which has been repositioned. Now, when you first set up your Galaxy S6, you're prompted to set up the fingerprint scanner. So let's go ahead and do that manually. I'm gonna go right to our settings panel. I'm gonna to go to lock screen and security. I'm gonna to go to fingerprints. I'm gonna use the finger I already set up here when I first set up the device. And now we're gonna add a new fingerprint. So again, the process is very similar to the iPhone. It actually coaches you through the process as it images your finger. Now you can also use your fingerprint for web sign-in or verify your Samsung account. Now you will also need to establish a backup password which requires six characters with one number and one letter. So we're all set to go, just tap and hold the home button here, scan your fingerprint pretty quickly and unlocks it for you. Now for the most part it works in any orientation here, sideways or vertically. All right, so let's take a look at our user interface. So this is Android 5.0 skinned with a new and improved version of TouchWiz. Now it stays pretty close to the Android 5.0 design scheme here. So it's pretty simple, pretty flat, nice and colorful. And it just looks really nice. They've really simplified it and I think it looks much better than before, although it's still pretty familiar TouchWiz here. So you have your expandable notifications or you can clear them all out and you can see your quick setting toggles right from the lock screen. Of course, you can adjust your screen brightness and more. Now from that lock screen, you can also swipe up to quickly launch into the camera as you can see it launches very quickly. The camera is always on standby and ready to go. You can also quickly launch into your phone dialer. Now the great thing here is that when you're on a lock screen, you can just double tap the home button to launch the camera. So if the device is just locked and you want to quickly access the camera, just double tap the home button. Again, really quickly accessed. So from the home screen, we can swipe through our home pages. You can swipe all the way to the right to get to our briefing, which is powered by 
Flipboard. Uh, so this is pretty familiar here. It's new and improved, looks a little bit better, but it basically aggregates all these new stories and you can modify them here. So if you go up to settings, you can turn off certain feeds here. So if you don't want news, you can turn that off. Now if you want to modify what appears in these feeds, you can select specific types of categories. So if you want weather, just select it. If you want Mideast news and that sort of thing. And of course that extends to all of these categories. Now you can remove this if you do not want this here at all. All I have to do is pinch out here like so to edit your home screens. So if you want to remove this, just uncheck it and it disappears. Now you can select which one you want to be the home screen by tapping the home icon just above it. You can also just drag and drop these pages up to delete or you can add new pages. Now you can also change the screen layout here. So you can go with four by four, which is here by default, four by five or five by five to squeeze more onto each home screen. This is also where we'll find all of our widgets. So we can drag and drop these widgets to our home screen like so if we want, or if you don't want them, just take it up to remove. We also have our wallpapers here and you can select whether you want your home screen lock screen or home and lock screen set and you can choose from your own gallery or select one of the pre-installed wallpapers. We also have our themes and there's lots to pick from. Now this completely changes the icon pack, the sound profile, the fonts, that sort of thing. Uh, so you can go to the store to buy additional themes. There's not a whole lot to pick from right now. So for example, if you want modern and simple, you can select this theme, download it, it's free. Now I can directly apply this theme, but what I want to do is show you how to access these themes. So I'm going to go to my themes. So you can see all the themes you have available on this device and you can quickly access any one of them. So for example, if I want that purple theme, just click apply. So this completely changes the entire design of the user interface from the folder icons to the folder layouts uh, to the drop down notification shade and coloring to the fonts and sounds and that sort of thing. Now personally I'm not a big fan of purple so let's go back to the default theme. Now I can jump to our home pages here. You can no longer scrub to them using those little icons like you could with the previous version of TouchWiz. Now taking a look at our drop down notification shade, you can see with a single gesture it brings down both your notifications and your quick setting toggles. There's no two steps to it like there used to be. Uh, if you remember, you used to be able to use a two finger gesture to bring down all of your quick setting toggles and bypass the drop down notifications. Now the interface is pretty familiar here. When you swipe to adjust your screen brightness, it actually drops everything out of the way so you can see your screen brightness changing. You can also select auto and more. You also have S Finder which will allow you to search the entire device. Uh, which has been improved again here. So if we just want to search, for example, let's go Android. Now that search is broken down by settings, Chrome, my files, and web search here. Uh, or you can limit this by time, category, location if applicable, and tags. We also have Quick Connect, which allows us to see wireless devices nearby that we can connect to, such as printers, televisions for mirroring, or DLNA equipment for broadcasting our media, or other Samsung devices where we may want to share content with. Now taking a look at some of these quick setting toggles, you can see we have power saving mode. So this will activate power saving mode and you get to more controls by tapping and holding on that icon here. So you can start power saving mode and it'll tell you exactly what's going on. We can also go back here to get back to where we were. So if we don't want power saving mode on, let's just click that off. Of course we have airplane mode. Do not disturb here. So if you want to turn off your notifications or if you want to change the behavior of do not disturb, again, just hold on it, it takes you to that control panel and you can schedule do not disturb and allow exceptions and more. We also have a handy flashlight toggle for turning on the LED light uh, right from the drop down shade. Now you can also modify these quick settings by going to edit here. Now you're limited to a certain number of them. So if you, you can remove as many as you want, but you're limited to how many you can add. So you have to bump one of them out of your way, but you can see the additional ones that are available such as screen mirroring, smart stay, which is returning once again, ultra power saving mode, which is a little different than the standard power saving mode, NFC, private mode, and more. So ultra power saving mode is kind of a limp home mode. We've seen this before here. So you can see we get a very dim grayscale screen, very simplified interface with only basic apps that are needed, such as phone dialing, messaging, and internet browsing. Now in terms of these Android navigation keys, they have dual purposes. So for example, we have our home button, pretty familiar stuff. Hit it once, takes you to the home screen. You can double tap to launch into the camera. You can also tap and hold it to launch into Google Now. We also have our recent apps here. So we get that overview, pretty familiar from stock uh, Android 5 Pinom, so you can swipe them all the way to dismiss them. You also have a close all button if you want. Now if you tap and hold on this, this actually brings up the split screen view. Now it's a much simpler interface, but you can select any app you want to open side by side. So for example, if I want Chrome here and Gmail, opens one on the top, one on the bottom, and I can resize it like so. And the active window is highlighted in blue. So when I tap that circle, I can actually act upon that specific window here. So I can maximize this window to fill up the screen. I can minimize it, or I can copy text from this side to the other, or swap them between the top and bottom like so, or just close them by hitting the X. Uh, so if I want to close that, just close it out of the way. Now I can also get a pop-out view just by swiping from the upper right or upper left corner. So you get this little window that you can move around 
down and resize. Uh, you know, certain windows will only resize to certain ways here. You can also tap this circle icon to again act upon it to copy text, minimize the window, maximize it, or close it. Now, if you minimize the window, you get this little floating badge which hovers in the background here, and you can continue using your device and bring this forward when you need it, uh, which works pretty nicely. Or if you hit the home button, it also goes to this little icon view. Now, you can do this with up to five apps at once. You can have five individual windows open at once, and if you hit the home button, they all minimize here, or if you tap and hold on them. You can actually take it up to remove to disable them. Or if you bring this forward, you can also snap it up to the top here to maximize the window. Generally, I'm really impressed by how well this all works together. It's very smooth and quick and nice and reliable and definitely better than I've seen in the past. Now, from within our recent apps, you can actually pop out some of these windows. Just tap and hold on them and you get this little pop-up viewer. Alternatively, you can also activate split-screen view. For apps that are eligible for pop-out or split-screen view, you'll see this little icon next to the close button, which looks like two rectangles. So if you tap that, it will load the app into a split screen view up top, and then you have to select another one for the bottom here. So you can either select one of the open windows or open up a separate app here. So let's go ahead and select YouTube, and we have our split screen view. Now taking a look at our new app drawer, Samsung has been pretty modest here. They haven't preloaded a bunch of Samsung apps like they used to on previous generations. They do give us some editing options up here. All I have to do is go up to edit. And the apps that are available for uninstallation or disabling are highlighted with this little icon up here. So if you want to disable it or, or uninstall it, you can. Of course, a bunch of apps are not eligible. And unfortunately, you can't hide them like you used to be able to do on previous versions of TouchWiz. Of course, we also have folder in here. And if you want a folder, you have to be within the editing mode here. So you can drag and drop on top top of each app here and create new folders. Now you have options like uh, changing the color of the folder, like so basically it just changes the outline color and of course you can change the name. And if you just want to remove a folder, just go ahead and remove it and it takes everything out of the folder, puts it back within the app drawer. Now you can also order these by alphabetically if you want. So if you start rearranging them, just go back to alphabetical mode, puts it all back into order. In terms of our app selection, of course, we have a folder full of Google apps. We have some T-Mobile apps that came with this carrier. We also have some social apps that came pre-installed like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Instagram. We have some Samsung apps like Milk Music and Milk Video. We also have a nice file manager here that allows us to break everything down by images video, audio, documents, and more. So a nice quick way of accessing all your storage. We also have a folder with some Microsoft apps here, including OneDrive, OneNote, and Skype. We also have an all new S Health app. This is where you can use your heart rate monitor for monitoring your blood oxygen level, your heart rate, and quite a few other things like UV as well. So you can see your water intake you can manage here, your stress level, you can manage your height and weight, how much you're, how much you're running, your activity level, and everything like that is managed here. You can also add additional items. So you can add cycling, water, walking, hiking, sports, sleep, food intake, water intake, as well as caffeine. You also have goals, programs, and quite a few others here. Now, if you want to measure your heart rate, just go right here to click measure and just press your finger against the heart rate monitor, lights up, and we'll start monitoring your heart rate. And you can actually see we now get live feedback, which is kind of nice. So as you can see, a fairly high heart rate here. I can click save it to my history. You can also measure your blood oxygen level. Again, just use the heart rate monitor and we'll actually show you your live results. Samsung has also thrown in this smart manager utility, allows us to clean our storage and our RAM. So if you want to manage your RAM here, you can end specific tasks if you want. Uh, you can also go to your battery life here. Uh, this allows us to see how much battery we have estimated left. You can turn on power saving measures. We can see our device security settings as well as our storage. Also included is the Peel Smart Remote Control app, which is really easy to set up. Again, it uses that IR blaster on the top to control your AV equipment. All you have to do is input your zip code, your cable provider, and your equipment, and you can quickly access that equipment right from your phone. So you have a remote control panel for your TV or your cable box. Uh, and you can also switch between uh, different rooms. So if you, you want to set up different rooms, you can, and, which is kind of nice here. So I can add a different room. I can add different devices. You can also just use your TV guide here. Just tap on it, click watch on TV, and it'll actually send that code to the TV. Now, the great thing about this app is that you have this perpetual widget within the drop-down notification shape for quickly accessing your controls. This also works from the lock screen, so uh, you can quickly access it from here as well or expand it out to get the full control. Now, Samsung has been pretty good about not pre-installing a bunch of its own apps like it used to on previous Galaxy phones. But all of those apps that you're used to 
uh, having on other Galaxy phones are available under the Galaxy Store. So for example, the Galaxy Essentials category here under Exclusives will actually take you to all those apps that came pre-installed like Optical Reader, Kids Mode, uh, Altogether, Sightseeing 3.0, quite a few others, Car Mode is here as well, S Note, S Translator, and more. Now we also get a new and improved S Voice Voice Assistant. And when you set up the phone for the first time, you're actually prompted to establish a wake up phrase. So this means you can command the device whether the phone is locked or not. Hi Galaxy. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills, Michigan? Friday will be cloudy with a high of 56 degrees. So as you can see, you get this little pop up that will disappear once you're done. Hi Galaxy. Launch YouTube. Hi Galaxy. Set an appointment for 8 p.m. to finish this video review. Okay, here's your appointment. Would you like me to save it to your calendar? Cancel. Okay, I'll leave it off your calendar. I can also go up here to settings to modify the behavior of S Voice here. So you can turn off the wake up command or modify it. You can change the language, change the voice feedback, and quite a few others. Now, there are a few other nice tricks about Samsung's TouchWiz interface. One of them is the ability to just swipe on a contact to either message them or directly call them. Or if you're looking at the contact or message, you can just raise the phone to your ear and it will call them right away. Now taking a look at our Samsung keyboard, just tap and hold this icon down here right next to the space bar to get to additional settings. One of them is a floating keyboard which you can move around and you can get back to the standard full keyboard if you want. You can also resize the keyboard here by going to settings. So all we have to do is adjust keyboard size and you can move it to whatever position you want, whether you want a smaller keyboard or a larger keyboard. Not a huge range of motion here. Now let's take a look at our settings panel here, which has been redesigned and simplified, but we still have these quick setting panels up here, which you can modify. You can add up to nine. Right now I have six selected by default, but of course you can add others up until you reach nine. Of course, you can also just search here. So for example, I've searched for display or Bluetooth. If I want to search for, let's go ahead and say battery. There we go. We can jump right to our battery settings. So these control panels are pretty basic. Of course, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, we have mobile hotspot and tethering, which includes USB tethering. We have data usage, and you can set it limit, and you can see which app is taking up most of your data. We also have mobile networks, so this is where we can set up our APNs. Uh, we also have our NFC and payment, so we can turn on NFC, and with compatible apps, you can pay with NFC. We also have more connection settings. That includes printing, mirror link, download booster, which you can turn on. This will combine the power of both Wi-Fi and cellular to boost uh, download performance. We also have Wi-Fi calling, which works with certain carriers like T-Mobile. And you can select your default messaging app, whether you want to use Hangouts or the included app. Now under sounds and notifications, you can actually select your sound quality. You can use adapt sound, which will automatically determine the best sound for you while you're on your headphones and it'll actually coach you through that. We also have Sound Alive Plus, which recreates the effects of rich surround sound, which you can turn on and off again. That only works over Bluetooth headsets or connected headsets. Or you can use this tube amp amplifier, which kind of simulates the soft timbre of a tube amplifier, which is kind of interesting. We can also manage our lock screen notifications, so if you do not want to see them on your lock screen for increased privacy, that's where you select that here, and you can turn off the LED notifications. Now under display, quite a few less options than we're used to having with Samsung phones. So we do have Smart Stay, which again monitors for the presence of your eyes, prevents the display from going to sleep if you're looking at it, but what's gone now is Smart Pause, Smart Scroll, and all those other things that have slowly disappeared over the years. We also have our screen mode here, so we have Adapt Display, we have AMOLED Cinema, AMOLED Photo, and Basic, and I just go with Adapt Display. We also have Motions and Gestures, which again have been simplified here. So we have Direct Call, so basically if you're receiving a phone call and you place the phone to your ear, automatically picks up for you. We have Smart Alert, so if you pick up the phone and you have pending notifications, it'll vibrate. Mute, if you place the phone flat or cover the phone with your hand, it'll actually mute the phone call or a notification. We also have Palm Swipe to Capture, so again you just swipe across the screen, of course, you have to turn it on in order for it to work to capture the screen grab. Under privacy and safety, this is where we can manage our location services and see what apps are using it. We also have private mode, which we can turn on and off here. That's also available from our drop-down shade, although I don't have that toggle included here. So if I go up to edit here, you'll see private mode, which you can quickly access. But private mode basically allows you to hide certain apps under the private mode, and you have to use your password or your thumb to access them. Now, that only works within certain apps, and it tells you which ones it works in, like gallery, video, music, the voice recorder, my files, and internet. So if we go to our folder gallery here, go up to more, go to move to private, 
This will place the item under private, so when you turn off private mode, that image will disappear here. So let's go and turn that off, and you'll see that disappears. In order to re-access it, you'll have to enable private mode again, like so, and then authenticate, and that image should reappear. Now we can also send an SOS message by triple tapping the lock button along the right side here really quickly. Now this has to be turned on, it's not on by default here. And you can set this up so you can designate a specific contact and you can have it attach a picture from both the front facing and rear facing camera as well as attach an audio recording. This will also share your GPS location with that contact so hopefully they can track you down. So again, just triple tap and it will send that message along. We also have easy mode, which is a simplified launcher. Again, I call this grandma mode. So if you enable this, it dramatically simplifies the interface and places all the major apps on the home screen here and can quickly add new apps or see all your apps. You can also swipe to the right to add additional contacts. Again, the interface is just much simpler and bigger and bolder, so it's easier to use. Now, in terms of storage, you can see I have right now about 20 gigs available to me. The system takes up about six gigs of that. And then I've used space for some apps I've downloaded as well as 4K video and photographs I've already taken. Now, if you press the volume controls along the side and press the settings icon here, you can independently control the volume for your ringtones, your media, your notifications, and your system volume. If you tap and hold the power button along the right side, you can power it off, go to airplane mode, restart, or activate emergency mode. So let's go and activate that. Now, emergency mode is kind of like ultra power safety mode. And this will tell you exactly what's going on when you turn this on. So within emergency mode, you can turn on your flashlight, sound an alarm. You can share your geolocation with an emergency contact. You can bring up your phone dialer to make a phone call. And you can see your emergency contacts right up top. You also have your internet browser. You can also add additional apps. You're very limited here to Facebook, Maps, or Twitter. So if you want to share your location with social networks, that could also be helpful under an emergency situation. Now you can turn off your emergency mode, manage emergency contacts, or go to your settings. Under settings, this is where you can manage things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and more. You can also place an emergency call specifically to 911, and we do not want to do that. And you can see how much battery life we have left. So with 54%, it estimates about 12 hours and 41 minutes. Now taking a look at our camera app, we can tap anywhere on the scene to adjust exposure and focus. You can also tap and hold to lock exposure and focus and tap to release it. We can pinch in and out to zoom, snap our photograph, tap and hold to take a burst shot, and you can see it's pretty quick. We can also record video. Right now I'm recording in 4K video, which means I do not have the ability to snap photographs while recording 4K, but it's nicely balanced here. We do have stabilization. There is no software stabilization with 4K video, but of course, if you go to 1080p, you'll get full software stabilization plus optical image stabilization. But you can see the OIS does a really nice job here. So we can click stop or pause to resume recording later. Of course, we have lots of controls like effects, HDR auto on or off. And you also have your timer mode. Uh, you can turn off your flash, turn it on, or set it to auto. And you have lots of settings, but you can change your picture size to 60 megapixels to full resolution, which is 16 by 9, which is nice. We also have video size, so you have Ultra HD, QHD, Full HD with 60 frames per second, all the way down to VGA. We also have tracking autofocus, so you can turn on uh, continuous autofocusing with tracking. We have our grid lines you can turn on. You can turn on video stabilization if you're not in 4K. You can also turn on your location tags. Uh, you can review pictures every time you take them, which I don't want to do here. You have voice control, so you can turn on voice control to operate the camera. You can also use the volume keys to take a picture. Uh, you can turn off the shutter sound, reset settings to default, and more here. So with uh, voice control, I can say, shoot, cheese, record video. We also have that front-facing camera, so if you hold up your palm here, it'll do a countdown. And take your photograph. Of course, you can also just say, cheese does the same thing. Of course, you also have all those controls here. You have beauty face here. It does have continuous uh, uh, face recognition. So while it's tracking your face, it will soften the details of your face to be a little more flattering here. And if you want to change the intensity here, get a little scrubber on the screen. Now you can also take a selfie with the aid of the heart rate monitor. Just press your finger on the heart rate monitor and release it to take your photograph. We can also go up to settings here to change our resolution here. So we have our front facing camera, which is good for five megapixels or our video, which is good for QHD, which is really nice here. You can go all the way down to VGA if you want. We also have our mode selector. So we have lots of options here. So we have standard auto mode. We have pro mode, which gives us manual controls over everything like white balance, our ISO, our exposure, 
We have other modes for selective focus, so what will happen here is that when you take a selective focus picture, it will focus both the foreground and background subject, and you can refocus them later with the editor. Now we have lots of other modes here which you can move around and rearrange. You can also download additional modes here. Now one of them I did download was rear cam selfie, but you also have sound and shot, beauty face, and sports shot, so not a whole lot going on here. Uh, but you can see, if you don't know what each mode does, just go up to info, it gives you a breakdown of what each one is about. Now in terms of camera quality, this is definitely the highlight of the Galaxy S6 and perhaps the best Android camera I've ever used. And it's right up there with the iPhone in terms of how reliable the results are. All I have to do is launch the camera, snap the photograph, and you're able to get excellent images almost each and every time, no matter what the conditions are. So we have a quick AF mechanism here, finds focus really quickly and accurately. We have great color reproduction, very sharp images, and very minimal amount Amount of processing noise. We also get excellent low light performance, which is aided by optical image stabilization, as well as the image processing engine in here, which does a pretty nice job really showing the detail of the image without too much softening. We also get pretty decent results with the LED flash, so although we don't have a dual tone flash, the results look pretty natural. This camera also has great depth of field and macro performance, so you can get really close to your subject and stay in focus. Now, video quality is also excellent here with 4K video and optical image stabilization, so handheld video looks excellent. This camera also does a really good job with exposure, and we do have HDR with this camera. We also have continuous autofocusing, which is very smooth and accurate, so it's not disruptive and it doesn't hunt around a lot when you're filming video. So ultimately, the Galaxy S6 has a superb camera system and a really user-friendly interface. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the front-facing camera of the new Galaxy S6, which now features a much larger f1.9 aperture to let 60% more light into the camera. The camera sensor itself also features 43% larger pixels for better low-light performance. Again, we have 5 megapixels to work with and QHD video resolution, which is what I'm recording at right now. Uh, it's a really good quality camera here. Great color reproduction, good exposure compensation, uh, pretty good audio pickup as well. So definitely one of the best front-facing cameras I've used to date. Now, speaker quality has also dramatically improved from the Galaxy S5. Of course, we have the speaker on the side as opposed to toward the back, so there's less distortion here. And without waterproofing, I think they've been able to significantly improve the quality. So let's go ahead and take a listen. What's up, guys? Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the second-generation Chromebook Pixel, which is once again designed by Google and sold through the Google Play Store and remains kind of a showcase piece for the Chrome OS because it's pretty high-end hardware with a pretty high-end price tag, although it is a bit cheaper now. What's up, guys? Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the second-generation Chromebook Pixel, which is once again designed by Google and sold through the Google Play Store and remains kind of a showcase piece for the Chrome OS because it's pretty high-end hardware with a pretty high-end price tag, although it is a bit cheaper now. Now, taking a look at our new Geekbench 3 scores, again, we have that new 64-bit, 14-nanometer octa-core Exynos processor from Samsung. So pretty impressive results here and a pretty impressive processor. Now, if we compare this to the Snapdragon 810 and the HTC One M9, again, pretty significant gains over that processor. Now, if we compare this to the iPhone 6, the single core is higher, but the multi-core score is much higher on the Galaxy S6. Now in terms of performance, with a combination of high end internal specs, faster 3 gigs of RAM, and a highly optimized version of TouchWiz operating on Android 5.0, and this is by far the smoothest and best operating Samsung phone I've ever used. They've really toned down the software experience, so it looks a lot better and moves a lot better. The system animations are smooth and quick, and some of the more demanding aspects of the software actually work pretty well, like split screen view and the multi-window view, which historically has never worked terribly well on Samsung devices, but they've really done a nice job here. Now in terms of battery life, I'm able to get about 20 hours of standby time here and a good three and a half to almost four hours of on-screen time, which is with the screen set to maximum brightness. So with no power saving measures whatsoever, I'm able to get a pretty solid day out of this phone. This is actually pretty typical for most phones this size, so I really have no complaints about the battery life. So in conclusion, the GS6 is perhaps the most perfected Android device on the market today, and certainly Samsung's best, and they've really fixed two of the biggest issues Samsung has had in the past, design and software. Both of those things have been dramatically improved with this device. So the combination of great design, great materials, a beautiful display, a fantastic camera system, an operating system that has been highly optimized with high-end internal specs so everything moves smoothly and quickly, and software that generally adds some useful new features. Of course, a lot of people still prefer stock Android, but I think Samsung has done a really nice job improving TouchWiz. So the Galaxy S6 is simply a phone I can highly recommend. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.